स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया हेलो ऑल वेलकम बैक टू आर कोर्स ऑन प्रसिशन ऑनकोलॉजी फॉर द लास्ट सेवरल सेशन वी बीन डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द बेसिक्स ऑफ कैंसर बायोलॉजी वी बीन टचिंग ऑन द हॉलमार्क्स ऑफ कैंसर then we've talked about cancer detection methods then we went on to talk about molecular mechanisms of carcinogenesis and all now we will uh, further move on into a little bit in depth detail what exactly is cancer immunotherapy now uh, first thing for anybody the first thing what it uh, all for a cancer treatment what exactly comes into mind is your your chemotherapy then your radiation then but now we are coming which is a very novel technique of course uh, the name terminology could be only few uh, uh, a very few day maybe a one decade or a two uh, one and a half decade old but whereas uh, the technology used has been very 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 well uh, established and maybe me people have tried with in the ancient methods also so just to come back about come to the history of this particular um, cancer immunotherapy we have william coley he was called the uh, father of cancer uh, immunotherapy what did he do that uh, first thing they were called uh, coley's toxins he has uh, t- tested i mean it is a very uh, vague area that uh, uh, to take extracts from the inactivated bacteria like your uh, staphylococcus pyrogenesis and serratia marcinus to boost immunity in cancer patients what has he done he has uh, repro- uh, but he has used this particular coley's toxins to uh, check uh, to see if this uh, if the there is any uh, response uh, to or improvement in uh, for the uh, cancer patients this is like he wanted to use uh, the idea is to uh, use uh, immune system as a tool to treat neoplastic disease uh, which which was uh, uh, which was earlier in Uh, which was done in 19th century but however uh, this uh, uh, this particular coley's toxins are definitely um, pro uh, i mean this he had tried it only with sarcoma but uh, there was a kind of uh, a side effect immediate first happen what will happen if we treat it with bacterial uh, extracts this is something called what he has uh, found is uh, erice this uh, paul ehrlich proposed the concept of cancer uh, immuno surveillance first in 1957 he has uh, suggested the emergence of uh, the malignant clones of cells in a frequent event but uh, in uh, he uh, but in majority of uh, of the people you know even though you have some malignant as if you recollect when we were discussing about the basics in biology cancer biology we said that a single event can uh, single mutation fatal mutation can lead to a uh, a change in the genotype which will lead into the changes in the phenotype this particular uh, malignant uh, cell clone of, of cells uh, it can be he first proposed that because of the by virtue of the host natural uh, immunity this particular uh, malignant clones they are there are all suppressed the growth is suppressed i mean it's such a f- f- fantastic speculation but uh, sometimes in uh, the host sometimes even when an autoimmune conditions or in, in any other like because of the age you know uh this particular if this uh, immunity is uh, totally not uh, working it's prevailed then ca- cancer uh, cancer becomes uh, the outcome then uh, we had very important two important people bernard and thomas that in 1970 71 that lymphocytes they said that lymphocytes are responsible for this particular uh, for the outcome of this cancer then this concept has since been directly proven and indirectly in uh, both in uh, your immunodeficient uh, and animal models and and in even with uh, humans uh, and even in humans whose uh, immune condition so supposing if there are any thymus deficiency these particular individuals they were, or this particular uh, uh, animal models are prone to be uh, suppressed to cancer this one as i said they these two they have really uh, in, independently they have conceived your uh, cancer immuno surveillance uh, uh, hypothesis which states that uh, for, keep in mind we are introducing to another term 
TAA or tumor associated antigens or tumor associated neo antigens which are recognized and they are targeted by the immune system uh, to prevent carcinogens in a manner similar to suppose you have a uh, uh, like this uh, you all must have heard of grafting right where that if there is sometimes like uh, why is there a rejection suppose you have the kidney transplant or maybe a bone marrow transplant why is there a complete uh, uh, sometimes there is rejection right because the body recognizes them as a foreign why is it like even your cancer even a mutated geno genome which is given to a mutated a different phenotype why is, don't you think it will be recognized as a foreign by the human existing uh, human uh, or your innate immune system Yes, it could be. It, this is like these tumor, uh, these tumor uh, neo antigens are recognized as foreign as well. That was their hypothesis, and that is being targeted by the uh, uh, immune system to prevent carcinogenesis. This area of this uh, immunological fantastic can cancer immunotherapy or cancer immunology, it has been highly active for the last fifty years, and now it is like now uh, several. Uh, uh, therapy therapeutics are coming maybe some monoclonal antibodies vaccines you have the CAR T uh, th therapies which are really uh, coming from uh, bench side to the bedside and they are really successful when improving especially uh, your CAR T is very good for uh, the improvement of, of your uh, ALL uh, leukemia leukemia then for melanoma so uh, and then for some of the breast cancer you have the very good monoclonal antibodies this is now uh, very very active your tumors are complex uh, we all know uh, tumor micro environment you have already one we had one very thorough uh, lecture uh, over on to TME usually I just don't want to talk very much more about it but it plays a very important role for your uh, T cell engineering. Please understand what is this T cell engineering. Tumor is not a uh, which we have been always talking. You just don't imagine a cancer cell as only the cancer cells. It is existing in your tumor micro environment. So these tumors are a complex masses. They comprise of uh, uh, numerous cell types including your cells which are mutated and then your normal cells and then your immune cells such as your myeloid cells and various T cell substance. This transform cells, the tumor cells, they have this expressed genes and they even have genes that are normally epigenetically repressed in most adult tissues. And these genes can trigger uh, these particular genes as we know that oncogenes, right? You have the uh, proto-oncogenes which can trigger tumor process to, uh, to grow uncontrollably when they resist. Get back to your chapter on uh, hallmark of uh, cancers and uh, invade tissues. They can be these products of this particular genes are usually the ones which are targeted for your immunotherapy. The TMB which is really really important. First thing uh, the cancer per cell per se along with the tumor micro environment are important role for your tumor micro environment. Coming back to our uh, tumor, uh, tumor micro environment just let us lay a brief up or just briefly discuss uh, uh, with your uh, pancreatic tumor micro environment tumor micro environment as i said you have your uh, tumor cells so maybe let me highlight this for you each one at a time there are what is caf your cancer uh, associated fibroblasts please remember there are different subsets of your class cancer associated uh, fibroblast then you have your because uh, please understand what is the mc uh, uh, M by CAFs are my, um, uh, my, uh, myofibroblastic cancer associated fibroblasts which are close to the uh, tumor nest. They are all close to the tumor nest and they suppress your, they suppress your tumor cellular growth usually and uh, they and uh, and there are inflammatory uh, inflammatory that is your eye these are your uh, inflammatory um, uh, cancer associated uh, fibroblasts which are located more distinctly from the tumor nest and they secrete your inflammatory uh, fa in, uh, inflammatory factors such as some of your cytokines and then your uh, uh, and uh, pro tumorogenic uh, functions the pro tumorogenic fa factors you know also ca they can regulate your differentiation your migration and function of this particular uh, myeloid cells 
uh, and uh, such as your myeloid derived uh, dendritic cells then uh, sorry myeloid derived uh, suppressor cells and then your macrophages and your dendritic cells which in turn these things they will in turn your uh, inhibit your t cell uh, migration they will inhibit uh, the t cell pro proliferation activation and differentiation so your cancer associates here you can clearly see icafs here can you see that they are like these tumorogenic they can regulate your differentiation they can even regulate the t cell inf infiltration and they will uh, in inhibit your uh, t cell mig uh, migration proliferation and all these four functions of all this important uh, t cells are all uh, they are uh, they will be regulated where they are inhibited they also disrupt your d cell uh, functionality this particular cells also they even uh, disrupt your uh, t cell functionality uh, by promoting the expression of your uh, immune checkpoint inhibitors this i will talk to you in detail that is your uh, P, uh, pd1 that is your pro uh, program death one then your restriction your uh, t cell uh, infiltration uh, into the they will restrict the t cell infiltration into your tumor nest this is your t tumor nest and then promoting t regs this is something one more term you people have to really uh, take it up is your t regs t regs are nothing but uh, t regulatory cells t regulatory cells this is like very very important function of this uh, cancer associated uh, fibroblasts and then uh, CA, CAFs are can also entrap your uh, CAFs also can entrap your they can also entrap T cells in the tumor stroma so through your CCA, uh, CXCL2, CXRC4 axis and recruit further uh, uh, MDSCs this is very very important for the for by important function of your uh, CAFs and uh, so this uh, they have some of the roles like see they are all very very important cytokine kinds i'm not going into details of this cxcl2 uh, cxcl10 then your cxcl5 uh, and uh, they are they all have a dual role by promoting the infiltration of t cells but of uh, even your t regs also this uh, this uh, particular cytokines promote here my point here is that if you can see that all this particular you have the t regs there's many other immune uh, cells you know uh, which are uh, playing a very your t regs t cells which are playing a very very key role in uh, regulating the progression of the particular tumor for example imagine you have this particular t uh, you can can you how about you engineering engineer this particular t cells to uh, that they recognize your tumor specific antigen in a tumor micro environment like this isn't it fantastic this is very very important for uh, scope for t cell engineering so that you will have an array of very protective uh, cytokines which will help in uh, degradation of this particular tumor so let's uh, get into introducing one more term which is cancer immuno editing even though this is it was like in, uh, introduced by this particular scientist in 2001 it is a process uh, uh, whereby immune cells protect against cancer formation by sculpting the immo immunogenicity of tumor uh, developing tumors the host immunity could have a dual role either uh, of an extensive tumor suppressor and a facilitator of tumor growth and progression we will really talk about this in the coming slides they have used some of this particular uh, uh, mice that is uh, those mice which are uh, this particular gene and they have uh, this particular mice they are the mutant mice they have even your wild type mice rag2 mice this particular um, they have uh, uh, implanted uh, this uh, particular uh, tumors in wild type or uh, rag2 host the two the tumors which were uh, generated from the wild type mice this is what we called as uh, patient derived xenografts which maybe i will talk in my last uh, several of the classes so this particular uh, suppose you have a primary tumor for example growing in the breast and then you put it into the mice now that is the whole where your drug discovery programs are approaching the tumor which is generated from this wild type mice they have grown progressively when implanted in both wild type and your rag2 that is in the uh, mutant uh, 
uh, from the wild type. Whereas whatever the tumors which were in it generated from RAG2 mice, they grew progressive in the host, but nearly half of this tumors implanted in the human immunocompetent uh, wild type mice were rejected. Tumors arising uh, from uh, supposing in the in this particular if you had tumors arising from this particular mice, they were uh, uh, they were rejected. That means uh, and uh, and that means that this immunocompetent hosts are less immunogenic uh, than uh, those from your immunodeficient hosts. Now coming to a very very important uh, topic so that is cancer immuno editing as we have discussed before. Here we should remember coming to the next part cancer immuno, immuno editing. Fantastic terms isn't it you have the uh, T cell engineering then cancer immuno editing. What does it describe a process whereby the interaction between your immune cells and the tumor cells either it will really totally eliminate that which will not allow the tumor to progress or it may hold it in the state of dormancy or generate a completely uh, the tumor cell reporter that is capable of surviving in a immunocompetent source. So, here if you can see it is like you know this is how a cancer uh, yeah, immuno editing uh, works. See, this is a particularly a normal cell. So, after it has uh, transformed you have the three phases that is your uh, elimination, uh, equilibrium then your uh, escape. This is the fantastic three years for your cancer immediate, uh, immuno editing. What happens uh, you all must be aware right there are two types of uh, uh, immunity in the human body. First is your innate uh, immunity and then it is your acquired immunity. Innate and the adaptive immune cells you know they play a role here. So, in the elimination this is called immune surveillance. So, in this what does they do first thing it is like the process of recognizing your tumor associated antigen. So, re remember please keep in mind the basis of this uh, uh, the of this tumor surveillance is that uh, uh, tumors produce antigens uh, that may evoke your immune response by virtue they being being total foreign. How fantastic is it? Can Do you think a cancer cell can have such a specific antigen? Yes, some cancer cells definitely in some cancer types there is. But the disadvantage is that majority of this particular tumor says specific antigens they are called tumor um, associated antigens. That is like they are even present even in your normal cells. What will happen? But it is like this uh, This particular level of this particular antigen is elevated in your tumor cells and this because of the virtue of being uh, elevated it may cause if it is in a very uh, normal level you if you recollect your uh, antigen response in the host right you need to have a, a, a level of uh, antigen it should be in, in, in a small uh, further uh, a, a small enough quantity that uh, uh, immune response is el elicitated. This should be because by virtue of this overexpression of this tumor associated antigen, this uh, you have an increase in uh, the tumor, uh, the uh, immune response. This is where in the so maybe the body has recognized it has uh, as it's an uh, increased in uh, this one uh, as a foreign and then so I'm just trying to zoom this figure. Yeah. So, here you have your innate and adapted to all your natural killer cells or your CTCI, side dogs, your uh, IFN, your trail, your perforin, all of them. Uh, and then uh, completely just imagine how much is it a fantastic protection stages uh, come. Whereas, in the equilibrium state, what happens? Some cancer cells, you know. Uh, what is the challenge for uh, the uh, exist for the human body if all the cancer cells are eliminated here? So, but some cancer cells may not be controlled by the innate and your adaptive immune cells during elimination. What happens? These uh, particular cells which are able to uh, escape to survive the elimination process, they replicate with the new variants in the host, and they may be more resistant. They really know how to this particular cells they really know how to uh, tackle the host immune response. Sometimes mostly in this cases your can the cancers are uh, clinically undetectable and it is quite dominant. So, this uh, uh, maybe these tumors are mostly in equilibrium or they may even uh, revert to elimination or progress to the escape. It can be either way either because of your uh, uh, 
genetic instability or like uh, because of your um, immune uh, selection. So, let us see what happens in the escape. In this case, you know, in the escape phase, the cancer cells uh, have further very well managed to escape the complete host immune response. What, uh, what happens here? Here they are like, um, uh, they, uh, they, uh, they lead to, uh, because they have increased in cell volume, so that is when they are able to see or clinically detect tumors. So, immune escape can be facilitated through various uh, uh, mechanisms, you know, like such as your uh, CDK, NK cells, your CD8, CDK. This is like many cells, you know, here this is how the outcome looks like. You have the increase in, say, if you can see here, your cancer cell numbers have increased here, more number. The uh, may not recognize, the immune system will not be recognizing the tumor cells. I mean, they have become to all this uh, res uh, resistance to immune cell attacks, they are inflammation and then uh, the micro, tumor micro environment will, uh, uh, may lead to increased immunosuppression um, th thus because the tu and they, it may this tumor micro environment may contain in many inflamed tumors or few non-inflamed tumor cells so it is like um, this is again you know just to put it up in a better uh, graphical way you know how uh, the clinical threshold and how your uh, three e's are working over here now coming to this particular graph here you here also we can clearly see so you have your clinical threshold this is your uh, once the agent uh, is uh, clinical once it is uh, recognized you know you have the adaptive response then the inactive response and it could be eliminated now as the time pro progresses you know this uh, elimination corresponds to the uh, original concept of your um, uh, cancer immunosurveillance. Remember when we were discussing that, we said that we are nascent tumor cells are, uh, I, uh, if you recollect, I said like, right, the original, the, uh, when we were talking about the scientists who were first proposed that, they said that these uh, tumor cells are successfully recognized and eliminated by virtue of them um, being recognized as foreign. And then uh, that is how they are totally eliminated, they fall. But uh, tumor cells that elude, they have escaped that uh, this particular elimination phase will pro progress to this is what is called your immuno editing phase or called, we even call this immuno editing phase, we also call this as the uh, equilibrium uh, phase or even uh, uh, this is also called your uh, uh, advanced uh, oncogenesis where exactly your tumor expansion, then the metastasis see here happens and then here you have in the uh, sometimes even here uh, the immune system may eventually eliminate all tumor cells which uh, um, <coughs> leading to an outcome as where even like sometimes you know like the uh, elimination phase in the second scenario the sec constant interaction of your uh, uh, immune cells with the tumor, uh, immune system with the tumor over a few, uh, see sometimes you know the, the uh, sometimes you are priming your immune system with all this particular antigens. The constant interaction of this particular immune system with the, uh, uh, with the tumors uh, may actually edit or scrub the phenotype of the uh, developing. The, uh, the, uh, the phenotype, uh, may, the cancer cells have evolved much better or much different from what it were there or, or originally because of by by virtue of interacting much with the uh, you know, host immune systems this is then um, uh, this some of these cells which are no longer uh, uh, susceptible to immune attack you know they are progressing here into this uh, particular uh, escape this particular escape this uh, generally many of your cancer system, uh, the clinical systems, let us, uh, the lump formation or whatever are mostly detected here. So, here this is, uh, this cell cycle, uh, cancer immunity cycle. Here this uh, particular figure will explain uh, how, uh, all, how this particular antigens are uh, recognized and cycle through to uh, improve the uh, increase in uh, uh, tumor cell mass. The first thing, uh, neoantigens are released by tumors. 
uh, as they are uh, lysed you know and they are captured by your antigen presenting dendritic cells or any other uh, uh, cells uh, which uh, pro process this antigens to produce the peptides that bind to your MHCs that is your major histocompatibility complex dendritic. Now, this like you all know MHC class 1 and class 2 molecules are presented to T cells. So, this is your CD4 uh, uh, T cells recognize the peptide uh, MHC class 2 molecules. Then the, you have what is called your effector T cells right. This is like uh, they are primed and they are uh, you have the T cells which are primed here. And they are the, after this antigen presented, this you have the T cells which are uh, primed and activated to the, so that they will target your uh, tumor antigens or your tumor antigen specific antigens that are presented to them. These uh, three class of antigens only with uh, uh, I mean like uh, they. they of uh, which are highly tumor specific may be identified by your T cells. Please keep in mind. So, only those which are very specific to tumor or maybe the, some of these antigens which are produced from mutated cells or your cancer germline genes or your viral genes, you know, these three particular class of antigens. So, it is very, very important to see that only this suppose uh, the T cell engineering, um, we have any particular uh, product for uh, to target any particular cancer. It should be like you have to be the tumor specificity has to be identified by one of these uh, uh, criteria. And then you have the uh, uh, step 4 where the, uh, the activated T cells here they move to the uh, they move to the tumor site and they are infiltrating your tumor here. Then, uh, then they bind to the uh, step 5 the infiltration of this tumor and they bind to the cancer cells. T cells are able to activate it. So, you please remember in mind this is our activated T cells. They are able to bind to cancer cells. They recognize as called as foreign as we have mentioned before because of their uh, specificity to the cancer they are and uh, and uh, they are released uh, they released earlier and uh, they uh, bind to the can uh, cancer cells to the interaction between your T cell receptors. This is what you call your T cell receptor and uh, uh, and the antigen bound to the MHC1 class 1. You have the MHC class 1 antigen presenting uh, uh, sorry class 1 which present your uh, cancer cells and this activated T cells will kill uh, cancer cells and uh, they, the T cells eliminate cancer by uh, series of cells that will lead to your cancer death. So, for the dead cancer cell will again reduce, see this is how, again will reduce, uh, will uh, release a lot of neo antigens or your tumor specific uh, uh, antigens so that to continue the cycle and amplify the anti cancer response. Just imagine this is how in a typical cancer immunity cycle, these are the series of events that really go on. What exactly, uh, what ha happens in the cancer immunity in cancer patients. Uh, you have some uh, many other uh, cancer scenarios where the uh, immunoediting was employed. This uh, tumor antigens may not, so why does this, it's really altered, why is it like you know, if it is simple, why is the body not able to tackle even a, uh, the complete uh, cancer uh, 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 a normal tumor per se. They may not be tumor antigens may not be detected sometimes you know uh, by your dendritic cells and the T cells and these antigens may be recognized mostly as cells then as your effector T cell response. The so, T cells may not be able to they may not be able to uh, traffic or infiltrate your tumors okay, because of your uh, suppose you have the pancreatic cancer you have a lot of your uh, stellate cells which was so the tumor cells are very small per se they are very small in number but this tumor cells will inti will uh, instigate uh, 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 the preparation of a tumor micro environment by uh, by activating the normal inactivated stellate cells what will happen if during this uh, once this uh, inactivated cells are activated they release the uh, number of cytokines which will have an autocrine effect on your uh, pancreatic cancer uh, cancer cells which will further try to increase in number. So, even if you have and this will cause something what is called a desmoplasia or a C or a thick 
thick uh, uh, layer of uh, fibroblastic cells around the tumor whereby your radiation therapy or your chemotherapic drugs like your gemcitabine they are not absolutely able to penetrate and uh, target the tumor cells per se this for the for the goal of your cancer immune therapy is to should be able to initiate or reinitiate a cell sustaining cycle of cancer immunity that it will amplify and pro, pro, propagate but that but again it has to the balance has to be uh, achieved uh, that uh, there is no unrestrained uh, uh, um, uh, activity or uh, they should uh, then uh, the, once we change the balance of this immune system with checkpoint inhibition it could allow the immunity to be armed against the cancer there is um, uh, there has been a have uh, achieved significant increase in survival for patient with uh, melanoma sorry metastatic melanoma as i have uh, mentioned where some of this conventional therapies have failed, have failed so, so drugs such as your uh, um, uh, pd yeah, that is your uh, pd1 inhibitor pd uh, that is your protein cell death uh, one antibodies you know so as i have told you, you know we saw cancer immunity cycle how about this particular inhibitors coming after we have seen what is exactly cancer immunity cycle now we know how about having inhibitors so if it were so simple uh, i mean uh, it, it could have, it couldn't have been uh, a cancer per se at all cancer cells are very smart how to improve your how to evade host uh, uh, cell response then your immune response and all that they can uh, usually you have your uh, many of your uh, cancer uh, uh, immunotherapies they can be characterized into three uh, different types such as your uh, your uh, non-specific or adjuvant therapy or targeted therapies that is usually your monoclonal antibodies and your small molecular viruses and then uh, your uh, vaccines the first uh, some of these no targeted uh, uh, some of the non specific immune therapy is include your drugs and your cytokines that and other chemical molecules which could even uh, stimulate the uh, different uh, immune uh, response so synthetic uh, cytokines what do they do they drive the growth and proliferation of your uh, immune uh, cells so you have so much of your uh, if and gamma and all that you know which are uh, protective and this can uh, they can drive the more and more uh, growth and proliferation of uh, immune cells that thereby again uh, kill the cancer cells here and then uh, you and by this they will bind by virtue uh, by by and they target specifically the cancer cells and they lyse them so cancer immunotherapies are also are mono sometimes some uh, they are the monoclonal antibodies that bind specific to specific antigens either by directly attacking your uh, attacking the cells or by tagging them, tagging them for destruction. The three me uh, mechanisms by which monoclonals, uh, uh, monoclonal includes like they carry drugs or toxins to your particular target cells or monoclonal antibodies that tag your cells and uh, for destruction by immune cells and monoclonal uh, antibodies they, they definitely uh, block uh, or specifically uh, 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 target a signaling pathway to halt and uh, grow the of uh, proliferation of these cells and the vaccines are antigens that are made from cancer cells which are designed to to here we didn't describe in this uh, which are ma made to design to uh, stimulate the immune system to attack a tumor so in this uh, that is uh, like uh, this is all uh, like if you can clearly see this is how uh, uh, cancer immunity cycle like uh, can be at particular uh, they can be uh, inhibited in this step, first step is your uh, release of your cancer cell antigens in from the tumor microbiome and then cancer cell antigen presentation how we can see here by your dendritic cells or your antigen presenting cells then priming here it happens this with your your lymph node plays a very important role here priming and activation of your uh, t cells your antigen presenting cells here this happens and your trafficking of your t cells to tumors this exactly happens in this particular uh, blood vessels where infiltration of 
your uh, T cells. This is where if at all you are engineering your T cells at the T cell receptor region. So that this is where a very very important. Please keep in mind in this particular uh, session. So, and then infiltration of your T cells into tumor cells. Wherever as I told you like you may have the other uh, stroma. And then recognition of this cancer cells by this uh, T cells. The T cells is just not, you know, sometimes there's one more term, please keep in mind T cell exhaustion, which I'll talk in detail later. This is a very fantastic uh, scenario where the cancer cells are lysed by your, uh, the, and by, and uh, both the immune cells and the cancer cells are uh, dead. Now, coming back to your fundamentals here, what are your mechanism of anti tumor? responses with response to immunology so you have your uh, in in uh, Im as i mentioned before the innate uh, immune system can uh, discriminate cancer cells and normal cells and that can this is the first your cancer immunosurveillance like you have a aerial view the first in the cancer immunosurveillance process itself whether uh, the particular cell is a normal or a cancer the uh, native innate immune system can discriminate so but when uh, tumor uh, cells become malignant this much suppose you recollect you know when there is a conversion from your uh, uh, proto uh, uh, oncogene to your oncogene there is uh, uncontrolled growth and uh, complete uh, disruption and there is complete dis uh, disruption of your homeostasis you all recollect my figures what i was telling and even there is uh, angiogenesis so which will uh, uh, alter and activate your uh, uh, immune uh, innate, innate immune system. Therefore, pro-inflammatory cytokines, please, your important teams and the chemokines are released. And then you have the natural, uh, 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 sorry, uh, the natural killer cells, uh, T cells, the gamma delta T cells, your dendritic cells and your uh, other cells are recruited through the to the site. Thereby, a positive uh, feedback is produced for your uh, production of your very, very, very important cytokine, which is your interferon gamma dependence. You have an interferon uh, uh, which kills, uh, this plays a very important role. Uh, one of the key important role, you have the uh, IFN gamma dependent uh, process and an IFN gamma uh, the independent uh, process. So, as I mentioned, you have the natural killer and they are components of the uh, NK cells and your NKTC, they are the uh, components of the innate immune system and which are important uh, 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 components of the immune system and they are very much effectors of your cancer immunosurveillance. If you have your mice depleted of your natural killer cells, you know, or any other uh, 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 mutants or variants of natural killer cells, they are uh, susceptible to your uh, uh, to, to carcinogen induced tumor formation. And there is a chance that high tumor uh, incidence of high tumors uh, can be formed in this particular mice. As I mentioned before, natural killer cells infiltration in tumors is a positive uh, prognostic factor in your gastric uh, cancer, then in squamous cell lung carcinoma and colorectal cancers. You have this, you know, different, different uh, in patients with your anti CLT. I'll be talking about, you know, as I mentioned, patients with a congenital or acquired immuno, immune deficiency, they are more prone to cancer um, uh, and we have discussed in detail about your NK and NKT cells now and then you have the adaptive uh, immune response which we will be discussing to, to this like uh, you have the tumor antigens which are released and picked up by your activated dendritic cells which in turn migrate to the braining lymphoid and uh, activate your uh, tumor specific uh, native CD4, TH1 and CD8 cytotoxic uh, cells. So, tumor antigens are released and picked up by activated dendritic cells which in turn migrate to the draining lymphodes and they activate your tumor cell specific uh, NAV CD4 TH1 uh, cells and CD8 cytotoxic uh, T cells which uh, via your MHC class 1 uh, restriction. Go back to your immunology classes where uh, we, we know that tumor uh, uh, how this antigens are, uh, how the dendritic cells uh, process your tumor antigens and uh, to, which will facilitate for the 
killing of tumor cells which are uh, directly or indirectly through your IFN gamma. This is a very mechanism until unless you have this is all your different uh, procedures as I was mentioning in my earlier class, earlier slide where you have your uh, antigen uptake and processing, then you have the T cell priming, then the T cell trafficking. This is uh, this is all the different T cells. So, you have your uh, uh, anti-CTLA, AILA and IL4, you have then you have the uh, tumor micro environment, what else? This is a typical anti-tumor uh, responses. Then you have your important, your uh, CAR T cells. We will discuss all this in the next session. And then your T cell receptor T cells, where these are all particularly re recognized. So, T cell, this is a very tightly regulated process, you know. The T cell receptors recognize only antigens processed by your MHC class molecules on the surface of your antigen presenting cells so and uh, or viral infected cells so this uh, t cell activation requires two signals uh, recognition and antigen uh, deprived peptide presentation on the mhc molecules and the in uh, and your uh, interaction of the co stimulatory such as your uh, cd20 uh, such as uh, your CD28 uh, on the T cells and ligands on the B cells, you know, uh, B7s of the antigen present cells. This is very, very, they have high affinity to cells. Uh, the T cells, they have high affinity to cell uh, self antigens uh, are deleted, suppose uh, by negative selections of at your thymus only. So, several T cells are uh, identified. You like your, you have your. Uh, uh, CD4 helper T cells, you have your CD8 cytotoxic T cells. So, go back to your basics in immunology, then you have several natural, these are all very important terms, you know, your T regs, you have natural killer T cells, then you have CD4 uh, T cells, CD8 uh, T cells and these are, but T regs, your T cell, T regs are your uh, with cells which are uh, immunosuppressive and uh, T cells and they are designed to do, uh, tone down autoimmunity and promote self tolerance. They are, uh, this is all very, you have this particular different T cell engineered wherever you have your anti, this is all your where exactly in this particular T function, you have the different different T cells coming up into or the engineered cells coming into play. So, in the myeloid cells, you have your uh, uh, type 1 IFN gamma, then you have the where you even have your anti CD4. Uh, uh, to uh, help in say priming then you have anti CFS one and then you have in the TMB you have the anti VEGF and then the anti TGF beta or two. So, just uh, just a very uh, quick background of how uh, the priming re exactly uh, happens before activation antigen presenting cells load antigen to your MHC molecule. So, please keep in mind I am just uh, revising your thorough of your uh, uh, immunology basics here. They will uh, your uh, antigen present uh, present uh, antigen presenting cells uh, they load antigen to MHC molecules to prepare your contact with the T cells that displays your uh, a cognitin T cell receptor here. Uh, which also provides necessary to co this is your ligands B71 a very very important ligands B72 please my keep in mind we are just spending some time a little bit on basics because when we go for CAR T and all that you have several uh, treatment regimens which are targeting this particular uh, uh, I mean they they are uh, a very a important uh, aids for your uh, CAR T therapy. So, which is uh, which are co-stimulatory ligands your B71 and B72. Your inhibitory molecule cytotoxic T lymphocytes uh, uh, or your CTLA4, it is contained with the intracellular uh, uh, vesicle in the uh, uh, in the nave T cells where it is constitutively expressed in the uh, on the cell surface of your uh, CD T regs that is your regulatory. If you have your CD20, CD25 plus and CD4, it is your T regs, your T regulatory cells. Both classes of your uh, T cells, they express the uh, CD28. Please keep in mind, very, very important. All this is important because uh, in the CAR T, everything evolved slowly with respect using this particular antigen. 
uh, after early after activation in the lymphoid uh, tissues you know T cells are activated when their uh, T cell receptors bind to their antigen presented by the uh, APCs with the, with the, in conjugation with your CD28 binding to your B71 and B72. This uh, 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 this activated cells begins the process of displaying your C, uh, CTLA4 on the surface. This is your CTLA4 is displayed. So, after that what will happen? So, T cells with uh, peripheral uh, uh, tissues upregulate PD, uh, PD, uh, PD1 at the mRNA level during early after uh, activation. Here see you have PD, uh, PD1 mRNA. We will discuss this what is this PD1 later or uh, we discussed it in during our uh, uh, one of the classes of the uh, hallmark. Now, uh, and, uh, so, after activation in the lymphoid uh, tissue, what will happen? The CTLA4 uh, expressed by the activated uh, T cells bind to your uh, this one, your B7 and your uh, uh, B71 and your uh, B72 molecules on the antigen presented cells, thereby preventing their binding to your CD28 and promoting energy by decreasing their T cell activation state. This is uh, very very uh, interesting. At the same time, you know, constitutive expression of your, if it is continuously expressed because of this priming where you have much of uh, tumor specific antigen re resulting because of much of inflammatory uh, responses, what will happen? Uh, the T-Rex cells re uh, on this uh, constitutive expression of your CTLA4 on the T-Rex uh, T cells, what will it lead to? It promotes energy by decreasing your T cell activation state. This, uh, uh, this leads to trans endocytosis of your uh, uh, B7 ligands and interferes with the CD28 by further upregulating uh, the transcriptionally leading to a greater suffix expression of your PD1. So, you can see more increased level of your uh, sub, uh, of uh, PD1 which binds to ligands PDL1 and PDL2 thereby this promotes your T cell exhaustion and then uh, T cell exhausted at the site of infection when confronted with your tumors or with, uh, or with neoplasm. This is a very very important uh, diagram. So, very uh, before activation, this is early after activation and then after further, after much of a activation, so much of priming of this particular T cells with your uh, tumor associated antigens or with the tumors itself, it is coming up to uh, exhaustion. Please keep in all this uh, very very important ligands in mind, your CTL4, your B71 and your B72. So, uh, we have now introduced a very important term CTLs, your cytotoxic T lymphocytes and then so, so because as we know that uh, uh, tumor cells will undergo many genetic and uh, epigenetic changes and it results in the formation of new ant uh, antigens which in turn triggers your T cells. This uh, a population of CTL cytotoxic T lymphocytes uh, which will uh, effectively coordinate and uh, kill your cancer cells is generated. Here you have your uh, ICI immune checkpoint molecules or your please keep in mind this term immune checkpoint inhibitors which are triggered by cancer cells to inhibit your T cell activation. They may no longer want to deal with T cells after they have uh, got in control like please uh, it's here if you can recollect we see the activation step here right here they do not want any more this uh, this uh, they activate uh, they are targeted this uh, immune checkpoint in molecules are targeted by the cancer cells to inhibit T cell activation and uh, upregulate negative signals through cell surface molecules to facilitate uh, cancer progression and metastasis. Tumor cells may also activate immunosuppressive leukocytes to create a tumor microenvironment that poorly responds to anti-tumor immunomolecules. Ipilimumab, which is an anti-CTLA4 antibody, which is very well FDA, FDA approved, which is used for metastatic melanoma. Cytotoxic T lymphocytes, they are represent a very crucial component of your adaptive immune system. So, in the especially for controlling of many intracellular pathogens. Your effector CTLs have the capacity to, to promote the apoptotic death of carefully chosen tar 
target cells using a uh, granuline uh, using this uh, perforin granzyme and receptor mediated if you remember uh, we have it so ctls you know we have been discussed they interact with uh, tumors with tumor cells sorry through binding of their uh, t cell receptor to the major receptor mhc complex uh, class 1 molecule which is expressed on your tumor cell the interaction also involves binding between your uh, addition molecules such as your uh, intracellular uh, icam that is intracellular cell addition molecule uh, 1 and then uh, uh, with uh, lfa1 and your fas that is your uh, cd95 with fas ligand that is your uh, cd95 l this uh, how is the whole tumor uh, cell destruction is affected by the release of your uh, uh, porf that granzyme uh, gran enzyme what i was uh, granzyme what b whatever i was telling in the last slide and this is affected by the re release of your perforin such as your pore forming pro protein and then your tnf uh, alpha this also it's a very very important figure which shows the th th1 uh, the tumor helper cell and phagocytic response to tumor cells so you have the um, antigen presenting cells uh, such as your macrophage and dendrocells which engulf which will en which will engulf the uh, tumor tumor cells and your tumor cell products the tumor cells are uh, as i told you they are uh, uh, tumor cells are uh, they are presented to your th uh, cells here to via your mhc class 2 molecule which interact with your t cell tcr t cell receptors on the cells the th cells your t helper cells will again respond you know by uh, releasing uh, or secreting cytokines which in turn activate other immune cells such as your nitrogen your uh, natural killer cells see if you can see it's you know very nice fantastic they are very il2 il4 il10 i'm just going about the basics of your uh, immunology here so that we really is, we have to associate with our uh, uh, coming classes in uh, on, on this uh, immunotherapy this there uh, which in turn macro they will be uh, uh, the th cells respond by secreting cytokines and this macrophages also secrete your lytic uh, products li like your nitric oxide, uh, superoxide anions, hydrogen peroxide in addition to your uh, TNF alpha and then again you even have even your uh, dendritic cells here again. Here which uh, the, they will also uh, secrete your IL-12, TNF and your nitric oxide. These are all like you know this will be. Um, this is all the T helper cells and there are the, this is all the phagocytic response to your tumor cells. So after to, talking much about your uh, uh, tumor infiltrating cytotoxic uh, uh, CTLs and all, can these uh, really kill the tumors? Yes. The, we are now again introducing another term called here in the slide which is called as adaptive cell transfer or ACT based immuno therapy which which describes that populations of t cells that are specific for your tumor uh, associated antigens they can be expanded just imagine if you have a t cell which is very much specific for for example say her2 for your breast cancer or muc muci and protein for the prostate or any other in the glioma one particular antigen you identify and you generate population of c cells uh, of t cells sorry that are specific for this particular antigen for example in breast whatever i told and you expand this particular t cells uh, cells in large numbers and as like you call it as clonal population recollect my first basics in cancer where i was talking about the clonal every time i bring in the picture of the cells a single cell transforming into a clonal and again you transfer them back to the tumor bearing host this whole process is called adaptive transfer adaptive cell transfer or ACT based immunotherapy. This has uh, the tree, so this that have been uh, the treatment of patients with these cell populations that have been expanded in uh, ex vivo is called adaptive cell transfer. Cells are that are uh, 
Uh, so, cell, supposing this particular cells that are or T cells that have been engineered. So, I am using the word engineering here. They are again infused back into the patient after ex vivo and fashion and they can directly traffic, they can find their way to the tumor and they can mediate destruction or lysis. The cells can be in genetically engineered to express your alpha beta T cell receptors which recognize your MHC restricted peptide antigens or chimeric antigen receptors. These which are like your antibody like structures which can recognize structures on the surface of tumor cells or tumors. Just imagine an antigen antibody reaction in this whole scenario. While your natural killer cells also promote cell death you know your cytotoxic uh, T cells they have their unique uh, specificity for antigen which they recognize using a clonally unique uh, T cell receptors. So, your target cells are flagged for the attention. So, you are flagging your particular tumor, target tumor cells. For they, you are flagging them for your attention of your CT, CTLs, that is your cytotoxic ciliary lymphocytes. When they are, when they present antigen derived peptide fragment on the cell surface, when presented by the MHC class 1 molecule. This is what we have talked. And then this is how, uh, this is exactly how it looks. First example, uh, you will, uh, yeah, first thing, of, uh, for example, adaptive cell transfer, it has, it's many, in many cases, they use it along with other chemotherapy. Maybe, uh, maybe we will discuss it when we are in the further, in the next coming class. Just imagine now you are all very familiar with the different terms, okay, of your T regs and all that. Just imagine there is a fantastic tumor here. These, ma these masses can be, you can really fragment them, tumor masses into different uh, uh, cells and then uh, they can be uh, such as and then you place them into the well. You make them all this particular uh, cells as a single cells. First thing you will have again a flow cytometry from this where you can really identify this flow cytometry will have the markers of whatever I have may uh, explained in that uh, particular slide if you remember where I have shown the particular different markers for all the CTLs and all. After uh, you ex uh, you identify this particular uh, lymphocytes using flow cytometry, you will expand this T cells or grow them with several growth factors such as your IL-2 and they can be adaptively after you expand them properly they uh, into tumor specific T cell proliferation because you will take this T cells which already have this over expressed T cell associated antigens or they may be expressing T TAAs. Uh, the, they can uh, here and after you are uh, taken them one thing uh, prior to the adaptation prior, prior to transferring this T cells usually the patients are uh, uh, given a combination of your uh, immunodepleting preparative regimen. Um, uh, an adaptive cell transfer and a D cell uh, and again uh, IL-2 T cell growth factor and with this can uh, uh, and along with the chemotherapy it will lead to the elimination of uh, uh, the tumor and sometimes especially this has been particularly very well successful in uh, metastatic uh, melanoma. So, it may look very simple but it is very costly and it is more feasible in many and now it has been very well tried in many of the western countries and people uh, they have found uh, good outcomes for glioma, melanoma and uh, some in the breasts and the cervix. This is with respect to the ATV. This is uh, my earlier uh, uh, slide only where I am trying to talk about you know a memory here. What happens your uh, just a peripheral T cell uh, fate after your antigen activation. What happens you have the three different stages resting, uh, activation, proliferation, contraction and then your memory. So, after uh, uh, um, resting T cells become activated after stimulation by your uh, cognate uh, antigen. In the, in the presence of the antigen presenting cells and again these are all your uh, present member your co-stimulatory co uh, signals for example your IL-2, IL-4, IL-7 and they begin to expand in number.
so if your uh, CD4 and uh, the CD24 T Rex cells are present, they can deprive the tire t uh, the T cells of uh, proliferating. Uh, of uh, proliferating or survival cytokines, especially uh, uh, they will cause the cells to undergo uh, apoptosis. Once you have the cells proliferating actively here like this uh, uh, rapidly, you know, they have uh, depend, uh, different fates. You have uh, an acute strong uh, re-stimulation or a chronic weak uh, re-stimulation. Uh, re the, if they receive chronic weak antigen stimulation, the cell will survive but become reprogrammed. They will, uh, uh, they will survive, they will reprogram into specific unresponse transcriptional state known as T cell exhaustion. Here, I'm this is becomes your T cell uh, exhausted or exhausted T cell which becomes comes because of chronic weak re-stimulation. So the cells will survive, but they reverse. finally as the antigen and uh, your uh, cytokine stimulation diminishes as the immune response wanes. You know what happens? Uh, cytokine withdrawal can passively uh, occur to co contract the expanded. So the cytokines are no longer further uh, produced. Uh, to uh, to stop this expanded population of antigen specific T cells, a small fraction of cells will be reprogrammed here to enter a memory phenotype. Memory phenotype which is facilitated by your uh, IL cell and IL cell, IL-15. Memory T cells will continue to persist in the immune uh, uh, system and from the basis of amniastic response. Uh, in this particular, uh, uh, in this regulatory processes, T cell death usually takes the form of uh, uh, apoptosis. Coming to your TAs on tumor cells by T cells and other cells, how are they uh, recognized? So I will not be going too much into the details of uh, the TAs uh, here. Uh, they comprise usually of short uh, amino acid peptide segments which might be deprived, de which may be derived from any intracellular proteins. T cells recognize uh, as I said TAS through their T cell receptors using the MHC1 or MHC2 uh, on the surface of tumor cells or antigen presenting cells respectively. They have been two different distinct pathways have been identified for the processing of your uh, TAS, your exogenous and the endogenous pathways. What happens in the endogenous pathway? Tumor cells continuously degrade unfolded intracellular proteins within the proteasome into short peptide fragments. Following uh, transport through your uh, um, uh, several uh, pathways in the endoplasmic reticulum, these fragments uh, are then loaded into the MHC1. The final MHC1 peptide complexes are then transported to the tumor cell through the Golgi apparatus for the presentation to CD8 T cells. Through a variety of your endocytic pathways, uptake by intracellular proteins have been released from uh, they are damaged uh, from the damaged or the injured uh, tumor cells. These um, intracellular proteins can be degraded in the lysosomal pathways to peptides when complexed with MH2, MHC2 on the cell surface are presented to your CD4 T cells. This is how your tumor associated antigens they are recognized by your endogenous pathway and your exogenous pathway as discussed. Very very briefly uh, what exactly are this uh, uh, tumor uh, associated antigens. So suppose as I said you have the different four uh, types you have the unique tumor specific antigen then you have the overexpressed self antigen then you have the uh, this is self antigen peptides these are per se they are even present in the normal cells but they in they are very much highly expressed like for example your EGF and your uh, lung cancer then you have the shared uh, tumor antigens among different uh, organ parts or different tumor types and then your viral associated antigens. So coming to the unique uh, tumor specific antigen you have your P21 RAS mutated which is very well increased in uh, your uh, this P21 kinase your RAS they are all increased in your colorectal, parenchyactic, breast, melanoma, lung, glioblastoma, cancers. Then you have even your uh, 
beta catenin mutant p53 if you all recollect you know these are all many of your very important uh, oncogenes then your cdk4 imagine get back to your first uh, cancer biology class and cell cycle and then you have the MG, mutant e egfr7 and your uh, cea chronic embryonic antigen which is like only in the uh, fetus and only very small quantity in the liver it is present but whereas when it is uh, in the uh, in the tumor it is in increased level in the coming to over express self antigen peptides you have your mucc1 protein your her2 epcam then your egfr EGFR this is very very important if you recollect we were discussing a lot about how this protein level is increased in lung cancer and can this be a uh, or TA yes if you have T cells targeting or increased or uh, uh, if you make engineer your T cells from the patient and to express over express this particular EGF receptor yes success has been reported in some of this particular cancer types then your shared tumor antigens that is your MAG melanoma um, antigen E then your uh, which is for the melanoma uh, very importantly you have your HPV some of this uh, some of the antigens from HPV yes you are being using them as a vaccine now not exactly in your uh, T cell engineering or in your immunotherapy. Now how do you identify this particular uh, T cell antigens or T cells uh, tumor sorry tumor associated antigens not T cell antigens they are tumor associated antigens. So, like with uh, you can really identify it. So, you have DNA sequencing which is very useful for identification of your novel uh, antigen. So, if you have very good antigen. Now, in this class we really made a very good uh, introduction to all the uh, typically how the complete immune response what exactly what are all the immune cells what is the processes of activation of your T cells. We have taken the scenario of the PDAC pancreatic duct and here we are discussing about how can we uh, how can the different molecular tools you know be exploited to see supposing you have your uh, normal DNA and you have the tumor DNA then you go for your DNA uh, sequencing and you can really go find out what are the exactly variants the same with your RNA also. So you have uh, this particular uh, DNA sequencing uh, can be used to identify your uh, difference in uh, to look out for variants. Then you even have your uh, uh, your whole exome sequencing and then you identify the selection of candidates for your uh, uh, for uh, candidates for using them for neo antigen. You have uh, uh, this is all the how the unfiltered neo antigen uh, candidate list and then uh, you have the peptide prediction you use even lot of all of this not only the dna sequencing even your proteomics also and then uh, you use this uh, evaluation of the immunogenicity of the you have to evaluate the antigens or immunogenicity for example you end up going all through for identifying an antigen and if it's not able to uh, induce an immunogenic uh, response like your hla1 using your HLA1, HLA2, T cell receptors, peptides. This is how the whole neo antigen identification, this is all the workflow for that. Then now coming to you know that now a co strong correlation which exists between your uh, tumor infiltrating lymphocytes in the cancer tissue, uh, uh, which will uh, and uh, the favorable prognosis in for uh, various ma malignancies. This, this, uh, th there is like if there is a higher infiltration of TILs, there is one. Yeah. So, in particularly, you need to have the presence of your CD8 cytotoxic T cells and the re ratio of your uh, CD8 effector T cells or CD4 or 4 cat box P3 regulator cells they have to be uh, say uh, correlated to improve prognosis and uh, solid uh, tumors and uh, survival in solid tumors. So, your T cell antigen uh, receptors on T lymphocytes engage with antigenic peptides present on the cell surface in the of the contest of your MHCs. This is with uh, respect to you have the difference. So, in this uh, next uh, class, we will be different, uh, definitely uh, discussing about the different uh, forms of your uh, uh, cancer immunotherapy that is, which include even your oncolytic virus therapies, then your uh, cancer uh, vaccines, and uh, then you have the cytotoxic cytokine therapies, adaptive cell transfer, which we have already discussed in detail, and your immune check 
point inhibitors. Uh, all this dendritic vaccines, monoclonal vaccines will be discussed in detail in the next class. Thank you.